Good afternoon, lovely people. This afternoon I'm off to Rome to try and get my car customs cleared so that I can have my number plate changed to an Italian one, which is required by law after six months of residency. If you're thinking of going through this process yourself, I can tell you it's definitely not quick and certainly not straightforward at all. There are a number of steps you need to complete. So first of all, you have to cancel the registration of the car in the original country. So for me, I had to contact the DVLA and let them know the car's being exported permanently. However, I didn't receive any kind of certification back from them so who knows if that went through or not then you have to obtain certified translations of all your documents into Italian then you need to get a certificate of conformity so for example my car doesn't conform at the moment because the headlights are at the wrong angle or something like that so a few things will need to be changed then you need to get the customs clearance which is what I'm trying to do today um, and then you'll need to go to a special office called the UMC um, and they will prepare a file and ask you for more documents and then if they agree you will get to change your number plate into an Italian one. I definitely wouldn't recommend going down this route if you can possibly help it. The reasons I'm having to do this is because A, I had to bring my dog across to Italy so it was necessary to come by car and also I just wouldn't have survived the last few months living in the rural mountains of Abruzzo without having a vehicle to get me around. And secondly, second-hand vehicles are very, very expensive in Italy for some reason. So to buy my car again over here would have cost me three times as much as it's fairly new. Um, I couldn't sell my car over here because it's a right-hand drive so no one wants it and I didn't really want to have to drive it all the way back to England to sell. Plus I've already told DVLA that it's been permanently exported so I couldn't really do that either. We've arrived at the customs centre in Rome and after spending a long time looking for the vehicle identification number we are in and they are dealing with the paperwork so we have about an hour to wait and then hopefully it will all be done. Before dinner we decided to pay a visit to the Museum of Dreamers which opened in Rome about a month ago and everyone's been raving about it. It's effectively Instagram catnip with a series of rooms with various visual effects for people to take photographs in. I enjoyed the experience but I thought it was a little overpriced for 17 euros and only took about half an hour to get around. I have to admit the ball pit was quite fun and you got to wear these groovy little shoe covers. I was looking forward to trying out this restaurant which has rave reviews. Starters were cacio e pepe and amatriciana. Mains were lobster roll and steak, but I have to say everything was average and very overpriced. Today is the 5th of November and obviously there's no bonfire night here, but it is one of the traditions I miss from England, so in a moment I'm going to attempt to make my first ever Guy Fawkes. My go-to bonfire night snack is honeycomb, but I can't find golden syrup anywhere here, so I'm going to have to make do with toffee apples and hot chocolate, I think. The weather's finally turned cold here all of a sudden. You might have seen we've had some extreme winds and trees coming down and all sorts, so it's perfect for cozying up by the bonfire. Also, this little bear becomes a hundred times more soppy and cuddly in the colder weather, so I'm enjoying that aspect of it. 
Right, I've got some old clothes together here, so I'm going to start sewing them up and then hopefully fill them with all the leaves that have blown off in this extreme wind. Right, Guy Fawkes is ready to go on the fire now. We just need to hope that the wind doesn't pick up so we can have our bonfire. With Guy Fawkes done, it's time to start on the bonfire night snacks and nothing says bonfire night more to me than toffee apples. So I'm going to start with those. In the pan here, I've just got some caster sugar which I'm dissolving into a small amount of water. And then once that's done, I'll bring it to the boil and quickly dip my apples in. I'm melting some chocolates over here as well so I can do some with chocolate and sprinkles. So my caramel's ready and I've just put it on a cool surface to stop it from cooking anymore. Apples are in the fridge setting, so I'm moving on to my famous slow cooker hot chocolate. In the slow cooker, I've got a liter of full fat milk, a tub of double cream, 200 grams of dark chocolate broken into pieces and 100 grams of milk chocolate, so extremely light. I'm just going to cover this and let it cook on low for two hours and it will be the richest, most delicious hot chocolate you've ever had. 